for the world to change If you feel the same Then go on and say if you're out there um, But part of my attraction to the reform movement, having not grown up, was its, um, its willingness to challenge the status quo when it came to Jewish law um, around women's issues and definitely around um, gay, lesbian, heter uh, bisexual, you know, the transgender community. So I was very attracted to it for that purpose and um, definitely saw myself as a rabbi that was going to do my best to try and be as inclusive as possible. And that to me is a big part of what being Jewish is about is the questions. Right. That we don't always know the answers mm -hmm. and I think the temple encourages us to ask those challenging questions which sometimes involve how do we be more inclusive. Because I think there's actions and there's words. The actions help to demonstrate how inclusive the community is, and that's helpful for those of us who do identify as LGBT. It's also helpful to show others, wow, I'm in a community that has more diversity than I might have been aware of, and maybe I should understand that diversity a little bit more if I don't already. I, I think, ser I mean, I actually do think this is an area where sermons can be very powerful. I don't, sermons often are sometimes the go-to answer for too many things and changing things. I think sermons, particularly to sort of out oneself as a clergy person right. and to sort of say, you know, this is, this is a fundamental right and it's really important that we create safe spaces within our community. We uh, did a couple of these events uh, to welcome Rabbi Letterman and sort of have them meet members of the community and they were talking to me about like, when did I become a member? And I said, oh, I was looking for a congregation and I chose not, I chose a congregation that wasn't specifically LGBT focused. And she said, what did you say? LGBT, what's that? And so again, mm. it was an opportunity, and so it reminded me yes. that even here in D.C., yes. in a very progressive place, that the, the, you know, we always talk about inside the beltway. Well, this is also like so inside talk for some of us because we're so used to that lingo. Right. But for other folks, they don't necessarily fully understand right. that. And so the more we talk about it, the more folks are comfortable in the community right. and therefore just talk about it naturally. I well, there was a moment actually at one of these where like there's 30 people in the room and we're talking, everyone gets like a minute or something or less. And, Jer and you said something about, yeah, and I joined with my husband, Jeremy. And I just, I, I mean, you weren't, it wasn't an agenda. I was like, and there were some people in that room. I was definitely like, I wonder if that's the first time they've heard somebody say the word, my husband from my, and I just right. loved it. You're never finished coming out. Um, that's great. And so it, we, we can play a large role in this within our uh, places of worship because the more we are comfortable with ourselves and comfortable identifying and just make it sort of part of our natural course of conversation the same way that straight people do when they talk about their spouses, um, it makes it that much easier for the people to see the community as to be as diverse and inclusive, hopefully, as it really is.